started you you were doing the Vegas version as well, which is a really different sort of audience to um, the kids who go to normal concert to, you know concert tours. Well, I guess you know, see a lot of people they look at. Uh, audiences like that. I can't say that because my audiences aren't just little kids. You know, I have adults that come and see me yeah. as well as young people. So, I mean, I can't look at my audience and say that it's a vast difference. Of course, there are people that normally, I guess, wouldn't, I wouldn't play in their towns probably. Yeah. But a lot of these people when I play in a place like Las Vegas are very familiar be uh, with my music because they've heard it on the radio and they've yeah. seen me on television. So. When it comes to audiences, I, I, there's a difference, but there isn't a difference. You yes, know, there's, there are the kids that know my music and that are totally, you know, into, into me or what I'm saying and, and like the music, and, yeah. and they're the ones who will, will really pay, whereas a lot of these people, I don't know, you choose to see what you want to see in Vegas, too. So. Your music is, is quite complex and a uh, very detailed orchestration. Uh, how do you cope with that on the road? Do you just cover, uh, carry a rhythm section and then hire an orchestra? It all depends. Going? It all depends on where we're playing and uh, how many seats are in the auditorium because um, the rhythm arrangements are, are uh, definitely the same, but they're, um, they compensate in some cases for the where the strings would oh, be. Oh, I see. So if you don't have strings, it's the, well, I we guess have, it's mainly Well, we have synthesizers and keyboards oh, and things yeah. like that, mm. so it definitely has a different sound. I mean, when we play with orchestras, I mean, it has, it sounds yeah. like it sounds, but... Um, what size orchestra do you use when you have the opportunity? So, uh, it all depends on how many pieces, it, it depends on the places you play and how many pieces yeah. are... Um, like, like, oh, a, like an orchestra, she would play with 42. Well, I was, was going to say, yeah. like at the Vegas, you, yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can get the most. Yeah. And the so. smallest, I guess, is about 22, 23. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a regular MD that, that uh, uh, Musical sorts director? that out? Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh-huh. Who's that? Uh, his name is Randy Waldman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, uh, he's real young. Has he, in the he's sense been with you music. sometimes, has he? Mm -hmm. Not really, no. Just uh, just recently starting, um, last few months, I had another musical director. But I was off for a while and just sort of uh, started change, not changing, but uh, I decided I wanted a more compatible group of people. Yeah. <laughs> following, you know, yeah. following each other on the road and staying together, and and that's what it's worked out to be. Everybody is totally compatible, and it's. It's not, uh, it's not uh, grueling because somebody wants eh, this or somebody wants that. And <laughs> I should imagine your MD happens. has to be very, very hip to you and your music because, oh, you, yeah. because of your unique vocal range. It must be more complex than the average artist to... Well, I mean, do they fit the orchestrations around your vocal or do you I improvise over the top of a standard arrangement? Oh, no, no, no. The arrangements are written for the songs. Yeah, they are. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And I definitely, before any string arrangements are made, they have an idea of what the vocal's going to sound like. Mm -hmm. Definitely. The, la the last album you did was uh, co-written with your husband, wasn't it? Uh, all of the albums are, yeah. We oh, write together. I'm sorry, together. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just the last one. No, all together. of them. We, we also collaborate with other, other writers. Like Does he write for other people too? Well, he's going to start. He's, he, you know, yeah. Because it's, um, I mean, this is uh, Hollywood, you know, L.A. Yeah. And everybody's here to, from all over the world to, to do what they want, you know, <laughs> want to be an actor, singer, writer, director, stage yeah, production, cameraman, whatever, yeah. you know. And um, it's not that easy to really break in. So uh, he's starting to do to do that, right, for other people as well, both of us. Yeah. On, on this current album, Dan Love of Stevie Wonder contributes. Yeah, and he contributes. We we collaborate with. I mean, we've other. There's other songs that we've written that we have, that I haven't recorded, as well. And Leon Ware was involved for a while. Yeah, Leon. Oh, we, we wrote. Uh, Freddie Farrell. Mm -hmm. And a guy by the name of Marlo Henderson. Oh yeah. 
but uh, the, the the album, which has that very romantic feel to it, uh, um, Leon, it, like you seem to be coming out of the same area of music as Marvin Gaye, and Leon has his own album out now, and some of Stevie's things, and perhaps Sarita as well. There's a very definite West Coast uh, group of, of acts that seem to be. Well, it, or it just it may be just coincidence that a whole bunch of albums have come out at the same time. I think uh, it is because I don't really has see a feel that doesn't seem to be happening in any other part of the country. Well, I've not noticed it. Yet. Maybe the air. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because I really don't. Uh, I don't see Sarita like I used to a while ago. Mm -hmm. And every now and then I run into Marvin and and Leon's been really busy, so we see each other in snatches and pieces. <laughs> So it's just probably coincidence, it's, as you say, the air, so, the, yeah. the atmosphere, the, not not just the... The, the style is, is very similar. Well, yeah, I mean the mood, not 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 the technical style, but the mood of the I mean, maybe we might be thinking albums. along the same lines, I mm. I, I, I would guess, I would think so. But Freddie Perrin seems to have taken a very definite, different approach with you and it, than some of the other things he's been working on because he's been very heavy into the disco sound as well mm -hmm. with some artists like the Miracles and Tavares and, but he's, he's adapted a totally different sound for you or with you well I would say that uh, he didn't have to like adapt because Freddie I mean his name is certainly new to the masses but people in the industry know Freddie Perrin as the guy started off with the Jackson 5. I mean, sure. his name was really covered up in the Motown yeah. uh, experiences. He's written lots of hit records. I mean, he's got t tons of mm. gold and platinum records. An awful lot, but his name was not mentioned because it was a part of the corporation. And he had written them as well as produced them. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been very familiar with Freddie's work for years. Mm. and. Uh, I just, I guess, you know, like uh, with the t Tavares stuff and the Miracle stuff, I think what the people picked up as far as what those particular songs for disco. Mm -hmm. yeah. I certainly have heard other things, you know, on the records. That's other true. Than that. that is true. There was variety. So I think on that's, you know, they just pick that out and they say, well, they'll just say, well, this is Freddie Perrin did this, and then he'll stick out because he had Heaven Must Be Missing an Angel and. The other, the, the other things by the miracles is because those are key songs. Mm -hmm. But uh, Freddie and I, I've known him for a while, and we have lots of things in common. I mean, we go to operas together, and, and we share, we share a lot in the same. Uh, we have a lot of the same musical backgrounds, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we're going to continue to work together because, like, there's so much. M there's a lot that he can do, and as far as producers. He's certainly one of the very few that I've ever worked with that understands what I'm saying and um, just has it so together. It's interesting. And it's not a struggle, you know, working yeah. with them. Or you have to compensate, or you have, you're not afraid to say, I don't like this, or and he's saying, you know, whatever you want. That's right. Who's, who's influenced you most musically? I wouldn't say anyone because I'm not that, I'm not like that. I'm kind of person that I am, I would imagine that in my life, everything I've heard has influenced me. You know what I mean? But, but nothing specific. No one in particular, because I don't think I sound like anyone. Mm -hmm. I know there are people that are, that are starting to sound like me, you know what I mean, that remind yeah. other people of, of... Like who, who would you say? Oh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I, mean, I just hear the radio, I hear people going, ah! Where two years ago you never heard people doing that, men or women, really. I guess perhaps Linda Lewis in Britain, possibly. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, she herself has been doing that for years, so... I don't know, yeah, possibly. Well, I've been... No see, I know a little of her work, but see, I was... You know, a lot of my music was very popular in Europe years ago. That's right, yeah. It's interesting you mentioned uh, going to the opera with Freddie, because you started out uh, studying operatic singing. Well, I'm... You, did you, what diverted you from that? It's, you know, it's, when, when people write, like, bios and oh, articles, they'll say, you know, the usually bio. they'll write. I mean, yeah. I didn't start out singing opera. I started out... Uh, in the church? Do, no. I mean, that's what they always say with black people, too. They just start <laughs> out in the church. I never was raised in a Baptist church. And I'm sure that anybody, whether you're in a Catholic church 
for Presbyterian Church or Baptist or Lutheran or whatever the church is, you sing. I mean, they have choirs. <laughs> yeah. And usually people with nice voices join the choirs, but that was not like anything significant. So, so how did you start? Well, I started off on the stage acting more than I did singing. Yeah. I, started, I started studying music, but I had studied music for years, and I would studied singing, but I was also acting and performing and balleting. So it was a, a, a combination of, of a lot of things. But music, you know, singing, I guess, is just, uh, was there more, I imagine. Yeah. Did you find, possibly because you were, you found that that was the best medium to express what you had inside? I mean, I was so young, I have no idea what I, you know, what medium I thought, you know, at the time. It's just that I was getting over, yeah. and that was, you know. Well, did, perhaps... Do you, ever, do you ever think that you maybe go back into acting or doing music? Sure. I mean, I've I've been reading scripts and things. Yeah. Yeah. Anything that is positive nothing. Or no, nothing yet. Yeah. There aren't a really. I'm waiting for some good roles for. Uh, for there aren't that many good roles for a woman. <laughs> yeah. And really when you're are. a singer, I, I suppose they generally try and typecast you into one. Particular yeah. Well, role. I mean, I don't think anyone really knows how serious I am until until they see me, which is going to happen. I'll probably have a guest spot on someone's dramatic television show, and yeah. then bam, you know that's well, what the way sort of it is. What acting did you do? I mean, when you say stage you acting, I did mostly stage plays yeah. and things like that, and musicals. What in New York or in LA? I did it in Chicago. Yeah. Basically in Chicago, there's lots what of theater there. Was that as a, as a, like a student or no. just as your just career as a was starting to take Well, off. when I was younger, I did it. Yeah. I guess I, I was a student, but I wasn't. As far as equity. Equity? Yeah. What is that? Oh, you mean? Actors' equity. Oh, you mean Agva? Yeah. 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 That was called um, <laughs> not equity. It's say, called say. Um, Agva. Not after. Not after is for television. I, right. It'll come to me. Yeah, it'll come yeah. to me. I know what it is. What What sort of TV shows do you do now? Just um, performing slots or chat shows or well. I'm asked to do those all the time, yeah. but when there's really, in this past year, there was really nothing to really talk about other than my being ill, you know, and who wants to sit on television and talk about <laughs> being ill? I certainly don't. I don't want to gain popularity that way, you know. I mean, I've talked about my illness to, yeah. to alert other women and men as well about... But in a way, if, if you talk about it, maybe it will well, bring other people to realize... Well, that, that I've done that. Mind. I've done that. But <laughs> what I wanted to say is I didn't want to dwell on the subject yeah. on everybody's talk show. After a while, you've got to give this, you know, like, who wants to hear about it? Living you know? Yeah. So, uh, carefully, we've not, you know, decided yeah. not to... Well, I mean, I'm asked to do all the shows all the time, but it's just, uh, I want to You know what's going to come out when you get on the stage, so you tend to avoid it. Well, I mean, usually on the talk shows, they have, they're, they're overbooked to begin with. Yeah, how do you mean overbooked? Overbooked. They have too many people on a talk show. Really? That's how I see it, for an hour. There's like eight people. Oh. You know, that's well, just, how that can you learn, how could you learn, right, how could you yeah. l learn any information from anyone other than the, uh, just the run-of-the-mill information? You can't really feel what uh, an artist is really like in, 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 in depth because it's just sort of general questions and then on to the next person or sing a song and then the next person comes yeah. in. And I'm very particular, so I just don't want to be that much a part of Sure. The whole that 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 way. It's not that I'm knocking them. It's just that when I go on, I want something to be mm. there to be something to talk about other than yeah. well, what sort of meals do you cook and <laughs> you know. I mean, just <laughs> I yeah. see that, and to me, it's a waste of of yeah. airtime. I think airtime is precious. The television medium is uh, media is it's an extraordinary media, and I think it can be harmful if to an artist or to a person if it's not done right. I mean, just as if I'm a person too and I look at a show or, you know, I don't really watch that much. Uh, I watch public television more yeah. than I watch the network. Have you seen network, film network? Uh-huh. Yeah. That really does 
apart from the ending, which is too dramatic, summarise what American television is all about. To me, it does anyway. I don't, I don't know too much about it. I only see when it's come over here. It's ratings. It's ratings. Yeah. Mm. And they don't care a, a lot of times whether... I was once told by a... Um, I won't say the name, but a head of, of a very extraordinary person who had their own uh, show for a while, you know, and I'm sure they'll be getting back into it. And so, big manager, and they said they only really want mediocre talent for these shows because a lot of the times they just they don't want anyone who wants artistic control. They want people just like you say in a network who you do this, yeah. and it's and and they want to do it. Referring what you were saying about having something to say back to your own career, this your latest album has a very definite message of the the, the love story in it. Was it conceived like that? Mm -hmm. Did you write the series mm -hmm. of songs with mm -hmm. that in mind mm -hmm. beforehand? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. How over what for a long period was that all brought together? Or? Over, um, I would say, a, close to a year. There were other songs that were written as well, but we couldn't put everything in, and sure. all of them. You know, did you did you record the ones that weren't used in the end? Some of them I did record, And yeah. then you made the final selection yeah. afterwards? Yeah, um, I, I wrote it as a, like a story. Sure. And um, from from a woman's point of view, usually all the love, love, love stories you always hear and you always written the way a guy says it. You know, even yeah. when women sing them, it's a man has written them. And women definitely have ideas about how they want to say things to men and how they feel about things mm. and um, I did that on my last album and I wrote this song Inside My Love and um, it was banned in a couple of cities really? yeah because they they because they really didn't listen to the song they thought it was too suggestive because the song was about two people meeting and this whole uh, thing and this the woman said you can see inside me will you come inside me and of course they thought I was talking about screwing yeah. Yeah. and if they had listened to the, with the words in the beginning they would have understood that the woman was saying you know here I am you can see me you know right. if you know you come, inside come and see me come inside my love feel me feel the spirit yeah. in me and if, and after that I think after that record, then everybody started coming out with the moaning and groaning and oh, and uh, the panting and uh, I, I want to do it to you and you're the right size and <laughs> all these really... But they didn't even really listen to the record. <laughs> you seem to have a much more romantic and, and gentle approach to relationships than some of the other yeah. uh, women's attitudes, like, like Millie Jackson or... Well, probably, you know, well, it's my lifestyle. I can only write from my own personal experiences. Sure. Like, I know other women, I like, I like a lot of the things that Joni Mitchell writes, which a lot of, she's been hurt an awful lot, or, or has probably let herself be involved in those kinds of situations, whereas me, I am just not, uh, I, I mean, I really like Joni Mitchell's work, but I'm just using her as a, uh, and as, as an example yeah, of, yeah. of like my, I don't get into relationships with people. That I feel like this: if the, if it's not clicking, you can't make it click. You can't make a love work, and you can't make a marriage work. You can't make relationships work. There's chemistry. There's things that all animals, as well as plants, are given. That if it's not there, it's not there. It doesn't make sense to butt heads. And that's the way that I am in relationships with people. I'm not going to be n not nice to someone, but if it's not working, it's not working, and yeah. it's just, hey, yeah. you know. It's great if you can help take that philosophy, because... Uh, that's, what, that's what I try to say to people. Very lucky. I try to say to people, well, see, mo so many of us have gone away from our, our true feelings, our first mind, and usually you know when it's happening, when a thing is not right, regardless whether it's business, love, food, anything, when it's yeah. not right, you know it, but most of us tend to like, to throw away that sense that, uh, that was given to us, and just go and do what we want to do. Sure, especially in, in the more personal side of Absolutely, because you want, like you might, a woman might see a guy and he looks so good to her, 
that, I mean, it's just, the physical is just overwhelming, and the guy might have nothing up here or in here, or the other way around. The guy may just physically be, you know, love the girl's legs or her, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> yeah. her teeth. And, uh... But, I mean, no relationships no, don't end up happily uh, disintegrated, well, do they? Well, that's another thing. That's another thing that I write about as well. It's uh, in entering a relationship. I mean, it's hard to live with yourself, you know. And I think when you learn to understand yourself, your thoughts, your good thoughts as well as your bad thoughts, or why do I think this horrible thing about this thing, or why do I think this person is, yeah. you know, whatever. If you start to understand that, I don't think you really have that many negative thoughts. But if you understand yourself, I don't think that too much of the negative comes into it because you understand right away why certain things turn you off, and it should. Then it, you know, if you know why it turns you off, then it doesn't hassle you mm. because you understand. Well, I just don't like the color gold, yellow gold. I like maybe platinum gold. Well, that's not really the truth for me, but you know that, so it shouldn't upset you. Well, you know what you like, and that's the same with people, I think. And I think once a person starts really liking themselves. And, un and and starting to understand all the negative as well as the positive things in that in themselves, I think it uh, you like yourself a little bit more, and I think you can like other people more, and you can accept other people's uh, faults as well as all the the beauty that you see with them. You, you must be a, a, a very contented lady then. I w I think so. I think so. I mean, like I I meet people all the time. And I like a lot of people, and not necessarily the way, uh, if I like someone, I might not uh, particularly like their lifestyle, exactly, but there's something about them that I like, but I'm not going to try to change their lifestyle or change the person, because I, first of all, like that person. Mm. you would be changing what you like. Right. And that's what people do in relationships a lot of times. It gets back to the beginning of the question. Mm. You, um, you want, you like that, but you want that person to be like what you want them to be like. And that goes the same with parents and children and the whole thing. And I write about stuff like that because people take that for granted. You, you fall in love with someone and the physical and everything is so great right away. And then, then after that's kind of worn off, then what? You know, is there anything left? Is that all you wanted the person for that you want? Uh, it's, uh, it's really is it just the way they dressed? Or the perfume, or you well, know, those incidentals really become of minor importance when uh, you've really got a good thing going. They become important if they're not right, but you don't think about it. Absolutely, but, it's like uh, it's just the way you say. Um, it's not not calculating, but um, how can I put it? It's as if you say you've never been hurt. Never allowed yourself to be hurt. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, sure, and 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 love. You know, Which from the beginning, you about, yeah, you it? you you get hurt, but it all depends on how long you're going to let it, or if you're going to let it hurt, or if you're going to understand, you're going to deeply understand the hurt, understand why a thing didn't work out, why a relationship didn't work out. It doesn't have to hurt that that much if you understand, if you're truthful about the relationship. You know, because years ago I, you know, I'd gone with married men, you know, and 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 it wasn't one of those relationships where, as I thought, it was um, it was a safe relationship to go with someone that was married. I mean, I was physically attracted to someone, and as well as mentally attracted to to this person. And of course, I knew it wasn't going to work out, but as as long as it was, maybe that's why. People do have those sort of relationships because they know it's fairly safe. Well, you never know. I mean, but you never know. Because I was involved in a relationship where at once I didn't even know the guy was married. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. And, uh. The ships I, don't, I don't think. That's a, a <laughs> I don't think that has anything to do with it, you know? I think. No. Are you bringing your kids up with the same philosophy? Absolutely. I mean, you're, I think we're here to enjoy ourselves. I don't think mm. it's supposed to be a heavy struggle living here, I mean, on this well, planet, be right. because it's just too much to enjoy. There's too much beauty around us, as, as on the planet. I mean, there's nothing on this planet that's imported from any place else. And look at all the incredible stuff that's here, and uh, the beauty that, that art and people and 
and the just the the beauty of the planet brings you. It's just I, people are so involved in what color someone is and what religion it is. Yeah. And about five thousand years from now, when everybody's mixed with everything and there's no such thing as this or that, then what? Yeah. You know, it won't even matter. When you're writing your songs and unfolding the storyline and releasing the emotions in you, do you hear the melody as well, or do you write like poetry? Well, it all depends on what it is. Sometimes I come up with a, a melody that there's like a story that comes... Oh, the melody Comes out with it, story, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or either, um, you know, you might hum... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, just start... Sure. Words will start coming, or else chords will be played and then um do you actually play an instrument yourself not very well but just chords yeah to help chords you on the guitar as well as the uh you have yeah. something you want to put in there yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. or else the words are written and music around it all depends on what comes up or just sure. you know yeah. it could be a sit down get it all together kind of thing i understand yeah so no format, no. I mean, no. Some, sometimes Dick and I, we sit down and we try to, uh, not try, we, we, we allow two hours every day or every other day to, yeah. you know, to, to, to get, come up with something, mm. whatever it is. Because a lot of writers write a lot of things and whether or not it's used now or used later. Because, because your music is obviously very personal. I mean, you're not some entertainers. They're just uh, singing material. They might they might not be feeling it. You obviously do. Does that the audience reaction affect you as well? So that if they if you're not getting across, if they don't seem to be understanding what you're singing about, does that affect you? Well, it hasn't happened so far. <laughs> <laughs> so That's great. I can't. Uh, yeah. I can't say that. Um, I think there are enough people in the world that just you know that enough people would understand what I'm saying as well as what someone else is saying as well as what someone else is saying because mm. there are billions of people in the world and and uh, you know, my music doesn't just go to the United States it goes to Europe it goes right. to Japan it goes to South America it goes to uh, Australia New Zealand Canada so it's like it's everywhere mm. and you can maybe interpret Africa. Words, mm -hmm. what other people want to say Absolutely. But can't quite. Absolutely, because a lot of people understand what you're saying in the melody. They can feel it. They can feel it and aren't understanding the words, you know, in other mm -hmm. countries. You know, the me melody yeah. has a definite, a definite, I'm, I'm into melodies because I think melodies are just, they do something to, um, to your body chemistry and some of the, to your nervous system. Well, uh, yes, right. Music is the most international mm -hmm. language of them all. Really. So I, th in that, in that case, people can, People in Africa or South America or Japan or wherever that don't even, that don't that don't know a word of English hear it and they like the melody yeah. so and they understand what you what you're feeling and what you're saying in in the melody. Certainly, the truth with people like um, Tchaikovsky and Beethoven and people like that. I mean, their music was loved all over the world, and of course, it wasn't. Uh, Words weren't written to a lot of, you know, to any of it really, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the choral things, yes, but not really. Word words. Is, is your preference in uh, uh, classical music for the romantic composers? As well? well, I'm a romanticist. I would say that, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, someone who, um, I have, I know what I want. I know, I mean, I'm very open to new things, and I'm open to learning. I hope I never stop learning. And uh, I'm open to uh, to learn, and I'm open to the point where the things that are a part of me that I that I that I deal with on a daily basis, or that I find from other people, I like to share with other people because because in a world like a world where every other day you read hostages here and this one being slain there and Bombing fighting there, over yeah. this and fi fighting over God and all this, I mean, there's and if people would just really relax and just really. Well, you're lucky. You're in a profession where you can yeah. give a lot of people a lot of pleasure. I, it's necessary. I mean, I need that as well. I need to when I when I go out to a performance or to go yeah. buy music. 
I'm buying it as a person, not as a critic, or um, I'm just buying it as like the next person to enjoy it. And I certainly like to just sit back and whether I'm cooking or whether I'm taking a bath or whatever, whatever it is, I like to hear something good. Yeah. I like to, to just make it, you know, flow through my body just like anyone else. Right. Who would you put on the stereo at home? The, the well, it all depends. At the, oh, for some reason, Keith Jarrett's name just popped yeah. out of my mind, you know, for that moment. Or else, you know, I mean, I like music from all over the world. I'm not just the kind of, you know, I was raised like that. I've had so much music, music from Bali, you know. I like Japanese artists. I like French. I like music, you know, so it's like in my... And my music repertoire, it's not just like what's happening current, currently, yeah. what's the, the latest rage, you know. <laughs> it uh, may very well be someone. Jo I like Georges Bain, Georges Bain, I think that's what they call him. Yeah. I don't know that name. He's uh, Brazilian. Oh, yeah? He's with, sort of like a jazzy, but, yeah. you know, I mean, that's another thing, classifying things. What's jazz? Jazz today yeah. isn't even what jazz was when I was a kid, and I'm not even 30. You know, so it's like, what's jazz? It's just music. Yeah. You know, they I call stuff rock jazz. I mean, what is rock yeah. jazz? It's all the same. Uh, a, a guy said music. that to me in, in London uh, a few weeks ago. I don't know if you know the name Edward Heath. He was our prime minister. Mm -hmm. And he was at a Rod Stewart concert. And I saw him afterwards. And, uh, you know, I mean, it was. It was had to be an obvious question for Jens. I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> it's you know, it's what does it look like I'm doing yeah, here? Yeah, and he said, well, it's the first time anybody's asked me to come to one. And he, said, <laughs> he said, but you shouldn't just class it as rock music. It's, it's music. music. It's music, full we'll stop. It's funny because I, I can appreciate other things other than classical stuff, which is, you know, he's, he's really known to I mean, you're into, into music. Music is music, and everything is borrowed from everything. There are only a certain amount of keys or notes. <laughs> And uh, it's, you know, it's just how it's delivered. It can be just like anything else. It's like love. How many times can you make love over and over again? The same positions <laughs> or the same lips or the same hands, and each time it just feels good. I mean, it's just, um, it's just a, what it is. It's two people. So music is it's just a, the deliverance is really what it is. What it is. Yeah. I was at the White House Monday. And I met, uh, I was given an, an award, and uh, it was really funny because, I mean, it's like, what like. did they give you that award? It was. I know you, you know, you've had a mastectomy and well, gone through a year of illness. Well, because I've, I've talked about it. I've been on television talking about it, and there's been articles written about it in, uh, in magazines. Yeah. And I talked very frankly about it because I know women just don't do that. It's because when I had my mastectomy, they wanted me to join some little hidden group to to talk about how bad I felt I start, you know, I feel bad, but that's not, I don't feel bad because of that. I feel bad because of a lot of reasons. My hormones are freaking out and as well as, you know, what's happened to me. It's not the fact that I'm a woman who's lost a breast and uh, yeah. I'm ruined for life. I mean, if I had to have both breasts and my arms off, I would be alive, you know. And, that's what mattered Sorry. more, you know, to me. And a lot of women were sort of like really hiding behind that and not really understanding. So I thought, you know, like when it, the time came that it would be right for me to talk about it because being a young woman, being a woman in the public eye, and uh, I think that would have a, that would help a lot of people, a lot, a lot of, of women, as, yeah. as well as men too. You That's know. right, it's straight out there. It's I mean, because like women worry about whether or not a guy's gonna like them because they have one breast or no breast. If that's, I mean, breasts are for, for uh, feeding children in the first place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's hard to imagine the experience. Um, well, it's not a, not a pleasant experience by no means. Awful. It's horrible, but, but the thing about how, how it is. How did you first know there was something wrong? I didn't feel right. I, I didn't feel quite centered if un people will understand what I mean by centered. Centered meaning completely, I, knowing myself, knowing how I feel yeah. when I'm right and when I'm not right. And I didn't feel Being quite healthy, right. Healthy person. Well, I was, I was still healthy. I mean, that's how I got through my operations and everything. So, 
so well, it had nothing to do with my general health. I mean, there's nothing wrong with my heart or yeah, flu so I mean, or... You just felt off color. I felt off-centered, you know. It's hard to explain unless you've ever had... Have you ever taken yoga and things like that? No, I wish I Well, had. see, then you'd understand what I mean. Yeah. It's like centering yourself is like knowing exactly when you're on and when you're off. And when you're not on, you know that you're not on and you're aware of not being totally right there, then you don't overdo your, overdo it, you don't overwork yourself because you know that you don't feel right, you know? And that was before the lump started. <coughs> I knew something wasn't quite right and then the lump came. Well, the lump... Did you know it was there? I felt it. you can't always feel it. I felt it yeah. when it started um, making itself noticeable. Yeah. But the lump was, it's not, the lump itself was is cells that go to to that place to keep whatever the enemy is away from everybody else. So the lump is not necessarily a cancer. The lump could be, you know, a lot of cells. That's usually what it is. Unless someone lets it go, then the cell, then the cancer cells eat away the lump. How does it, how does it work? I mean, like you're sitting at home one morning and your phone rings. The White House. I mean, how does, how well, does all that? Well, the American happen? Cancer Society. Uh -huh called my office, my management office, and said that I had been nominated among other people and uh, wanted to know that if by chance I won the award, would I be able to accept it this April because April was the, the start of uh, the campaign for the year and what usually happens is that the president gives out the award and starts off the um, whole campaign. Well, it sounded good, but I said, sure. You know, if I, if I get a chair, I'll be there, you know. Not thinking that I would, and I did. How did it go? Did, uh, did you have some time to talk to the president? Oh, yeah. It was a very nice experience. As a matter of fact, that particular day, they were, NBC was doing a documentary on him, A Day in the Life of the President. So if you ever see the documentary, you'll see the whole thing. Oh, that's The right. whole just, just conversation. Is, day, yeah. yeah. Part what, of what, what did um, Ford's life? She had a mastectomy. She had, I think both of her breasts were removed. But she didn't really sit out, she didn't talk. Like Eleanor Roosevelt, I believe if that had happened to her, she would have been the kind of woman who would have, like, said, hey, you know, look what's happening. Yeah. It's happening to me, you know. But uh, it was just public, and, but she sort of not, you never really, I never read anything she really ever said about it. Yeah. It was just common knowledge. It was just like, like she exists, but she doesn't exist kind of thing, because yeah. who sees Betty Ford, who saw her, you know what I mean? Yeah. Unlike me, I'm in the public eye more, and I mean, I'm, it just soon seems like I'm a little more in touch with the earth yeah. than the president or the president's wife. Right. I mean, you just can't. In some ways, has it made you, I Well, you know, it's like this. I feel like it was that instead of something worse. I mean, it could have been a heart disease, something totally incurable, kidney disease, or anything. You know, I could have gotten crushed up in a crash or something, you know what I mean, and still be trying to recuperate. And I, I felt like it was this instead of something worse or that. I mean, it's just like life, you have to accept life the way life is. I mean, everything changes. Everything must change. Everything changes. And when people say, well, your music has changed, or you've changed the style of the way you're dressing, it's like, what can I say to you? Everything is changing. The economy is changing. The yeah. world is changing. I could be very that's boring if you just change. That's the two words that rule my life, actually. That is absolute. That's the basic of life, that it all changes. Everything changes. It's like, should I stay in this one body or this one mind and never evolve or never, never leave myself open to being influenced or, or taught anything, any, you know, get any kind of higher learning, whether it's spiritual or whatever it is. Yeah. Certainly, I mean, I've changed, have but I haven't changed, you know, yeah. I'm just growing. Have you found in some ways that what happened to you brought you and Mr. Elman closer to each other? We were very, very close to begin with, but we just, 
we know more than ever that the things that we, how we feel about life and things is just the way it is for us. I mean, it's just the way we see it is the way that it is for us. I mean, life is so much more precious than, than uh, wondering whether or not, you know, your old man is dressed up enough for somebody else. It's a series of <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. give me a break. The series of appearances you're in the middle of now is just the first major concert tour. You yeah, a year, a year, year uh huh. That's, that's kind of interesting. It, uh, I mean, that must be quite exciting for you to be yeah, back on the road. Yeah, it is. It's fun. It's Did you ever think you, you might not be working again? Well, I never looked at it like that. I only looked at it as the positive side of it. I looked at the whole experience as a very positive experience and not as something that you know, mm, you know, that I should hide or, I mean, it's very positive and that's why I chose to, I choose to speak about it. It's yeah. not like I'm thinking of it like, oh, well, it was just this. I mean, to just to overreact to it now, it doesn't make sense. But to just, um, I mean, it's a part of daily life. Someone, you know, someone could have died. My husband could have died. I think I would have probably would not have been able to take to handle that more than I could handle what I what has happened, you know what I mean? Or something could have happened to one of my kids. The tour that you're doing now is it the beginning of the world tour. The United States first, yeah. yeah. And but then we're gonna are there any European I hope we're going to Europe this year. I, over July, or I think so. I planned we had planned to for the convention. Yeah. And oh, then do some Jubilee. Yeah. The whole wide world well, coming <laughs> to it into Jubilee. So well, there's we that we have a convention this yeah. year too. <laughs> Yes, I know. You have to work that in with the Queen's Silver Jubilee because the main thing to have. And what year? Uh, what, I mean, what year? What? what well, time? it's the whole year, but the the midsummer is going to be the main uh -oh. celebration, I think. Yeah. It'll be kind of colourful. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's it called? The, the Silver Jubilee. They, the Queen and uh, I've been married, married twenty-five years. Yeah. Don't you love it? Queen's <laughs> giving a party. <laughs> that's where the answer is. Yeah, we're having a party. We're giving a party for the entire country. Well, that's what it's boiled down to, really. Yeah. But, I mean, People are painting up their houses and getting the bunting ready. Well, that's, well, that's like nice. Like mm -hmm. You need more of that happening. That's right. Yeah. You need more of that happening in the world. I mean, instead of everybody just shutting their doors and not knowing or feeling anything about the next person, not knowing whether the next person has milk, you know, where their children have milk and instead of just going in and closing their eyes and not seeing. It's like our 4th of July, that's what brought a lot of Americans together. Our 4th of July. On 4th of July, I met people in my neighborhood uh -huh. I had never met in two exactly. years yeah. on my block. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's important to have those celebrations, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, so you have people that, that have only see you physically but have no idea what you are person you are. They can only see you, see what you look like. And, you know, it's the old story about judging books by the cover. And that happened this 4th of July, this past 4th of July. We had, like, a, a block party and all that. I would say the younger people in the na in the block yeah. really put it on. And a lot of old people, they the old I won't say old people, older people and middle-aged people who would never bother to stoop to lo that low to hang out with some of the people that, that wear blue jeans or whatever, yeah. came and then out after a couple of drinks loosened up and said, you know, you're, you're pretty all right. I had <laughs> no idea that you were going to be this groovy. You know what?